Alexander Gershenkron was born in Odessa in 1904, and he died in 1978. In 1920, he fled the Soviet Union. For a while, he studied with the Austrians at the University of Vienna, and he ended up spending most of his career teaching at Harvard University. He was more an economic historian than a development economist per se, but he has been one of the most influential thinkers on economic development. In 1951, he published a very famous essay, Economic Backwardness in Historical Perspective, and he later had a book by the same title. In this essay, Gershon Kron puts forward a very sophisticated, very historically informed view of growth. In his view, growth is not linear, but rather it proceeds by big leaps. A backward country does not do best by emphasizing agriculture, but rather they're most likely to succeed in manufacturing, especially to do well in an area where ideas and technologies and production processes are advancing rapidly. So to give an example, the Japanese growth after World War II was very much boosted by automobile production. The automobile was not invented by Japan, but the Japanese used technology transfer and did the manufacturing and the quality control just one step better, and this was a big driver of Japanese growth. They probably did better this way than if they had tried to copy, copy older, backward, or more stagnant sectors. So in this view, technology transfer is important, but a backward or developing economy can in fact do it better, and that's their best hope, to try to make that big leap with growth in advancing sectors. In the world that Gersh and Kron grew up in, economic growth often looked a bit like this. He also argued that social norms toward entrepreneurs and innovation were very important. The norms should be pro-entrepreneurship. He worried a lot about built-up social tensions in backward economies. Russia and the Soviet Union is one reason why this is the case, because, of course, the Russian backwardness gave rise to the Bolshevik Revolution. He also understood that in backward economies, rather than viewing them as full of surplus or extra labor, that actual useful labor with the proper skills can be quite scarce. In general, he was sympathetic to government investment and spending, and he also believed that especially backward economies had all the more reason to require government intervention, again, for the prospect of making these significant leaps forward. He also wrote a famous paper in 1947 arguing that Soviet growth rates were being calculated incorrectly. This was a matter of using the false technique, and he showed what was the right way to calculate these growth rates, and that would imply the Soviets were not growing as rapidly as they had been claiming. In general, a lot of his writings can be viewed as either anti-Marxist or a reaction to Marxism. The Marxist view is that economic growth was a series of progressions through regular predictable stages, whereas Gershenkron was saying that economies can make big leaps and skip some of these stages. Just to show his breadth, he also wrote some essays on the economic lessons embedded in Soviet novels. Gershenkron was renowned as a sophisticated and deep thinker, as a scholar, and he was well known for the large number of excellent students he produced in economic history. And that, in a nutshell, are some reasons why Alexander Gershenkron has been one of the most important thinkers in development economics.